Hello friends, today we are going to discuss thin bitumen surfacing and under this category the surface dressing. Surface dressing is a common and cost effective surface treatment used to provide a dust free wearing surface over a granular surface which is impermeable and non skidding It is also used as a renewal coat for periodic maintenance of bitumen surfacing. The, in brief, a surface dressing is a process of spraying a road surface with bitumen binder and then covering the binder with clean crushed aggregate chippings. These layers are then rolled in order to press the aggregate into the binder film. This may be done either in one coat or two coats and accordingly it is called one coat dressing or two coat surface dressing. Surface dressings are very cost effective. It is a technique in tune with sustainable development objectives and in particular economy, speed of execution, low energy consumption, flexibility of use and safety. And due to their texture and waterproofing qualities, surface dress pavement have good surface water drainage. So it provides basically a waterproof seal to the road surface. And because of its texture and adhesive characteristics, it provides better skid resistance and lower risk of aqua planning or hydro planning. However, the objective of surface dressing as a coating treatment is not to reprofile a road or repair roads where there are structural issues. In essence, it will not remove the dips and holes which must be repaired prior to the actual surface dressing treatment. It does not enhance the structural strength of the pavement. Binder for this can be either paving grade bitumen conforming to IS 173 or it can be cationic bitumen emulsion conforming to IS 887 and under that category it is suggested to use rapid setting with bitumen content of 65% minimum. The type of binder for surface dressing will depend upon the traffic and climatic conditions. As far as aggregate size is concerned, for stone chipping, it depends upon the type of surface where surface dressing is being provided and traffic intensity. And traffic intensity is measured in terms of number of vehicles per day in the lane under construction. And this is the matrix which is given in IRC 110-2005, where you can choose the nominal size of aggregate to be used in surface dressing. For very hard surface and for good amount of traffic, say 2000 to 4000 vehicles per day, the normal size of irrigate will be 10 millimeter. And accordingly, you can choose from this matrix depending upon the type of surface and the loading. Now, how do we determine the type of surface? Certain guidelines are given in the code to define the surface. For example, very hard surface is one like concrete or very lean because structures with dry stony surface into which no penetration of chippings will occur even under the heaviest traffic. The hard surface to which chippings will penetrate only slightly under heavy traffic. A normal surface is one into which chippings will penetrate moderately under medium and heavy traffic. And if there is no guidance available at site, then you can always assume the normal category of surface. The soft and very soft surfaces are those into which chippings will penetrate considerably under heavy traffic or it will be completely submerged under heavy traffic. And these are the surfaces which are rich in binder content. Aggregate size requirement will depend upon the type of construction. In case of a single coat or the first coat of two coat surface dressing, the nominal size of stone chips is 13.2 millimeter, and it is and it should be ensured that the 100% passes through 22.4 millimeter C and retained on 11.2 millimeter C. So normally we provide a single size of aggregate. For second coat of two coat surface dressing which is sometimes also used as renewal coat, the normal size of stone chips is 9.5 millimeter and here also 100% should pass through ISC 11.2 millimeter and should be retained, 100% retained on 5.6 millimeter sieve size.
The grading requirement for aggregates used for surface tracing is given at this table and it, it varies with the nominal size of aggregate that is 19 millimeter, 30 millimeter, 10 millimeter and 6 millimeter. But majorly single size aggregates are used. This last row is important here which says that for each column there must be minimum 65 percent passing nom nominal size C and retained on the next size C. So for 19 millimeter nominal size of aggregate there should be a minimum of 65 percent will pass through 19 millimeter and retained on 13.2 millimeter C and similarly for other size of aggregates. Aggregate to be used should pass some physical test before using them in field and these are the requirement given in IRC code. A strength test can be either impact value or low surface abrasion value. The value is 30 percent for impact test and 40 percent for abrasion test. Flackiness elongation index combined should be 30 percent maximum. A stripping value should be 5 percent means 95 percent coating should be there. And if water absorption is very high, then you should go for soundness test also with either sodium sulfate or with magnesium sulfate solution. Now, polished stone value, which is recommended only for very heavy traffic road like NH or a state highway, it should be minimum of 60%. Now, if aggregate fails in the stripping test here, then some anti stripping agent must be added to the binder. And by nature, cationic emulsion have better adhesion property and such aggregate may be tested with emulsion also. Now, surface dressing can be either single coat or it can be two coat. A single coat of surface dressing is achieved by spraying a layer of binder on the previously prepared payment surface and spreading one layer of cover aggregates and rolling it. And two coat surface dressing is achieved by spraying a layer of binder and then spreading of one layer of cover aggregate and rolling and it is followed by a second layer of binder spreading of another layer of cover aggregate and rolling. The size of aggregates for second layer is smaller than that of the first layer aggregate and generally it is 50 percent of the size of aggregate used in the first layer. Pre-coated aggregates can be used as an alternative to a descent agent and here binder shall be a paving bitumen of suitable penetration grade. The grade of binder to be used for pre-coated aggregates will depend upon the climatic conditions at the site. Aggregates will be pre-coated with 0.75 to 1 percent of its weight of binder. Aggregate will be heated at 163 centigrade. It, they will be mixed properly with preheated binder in a mixer. Important point here is that pre coated aggregates will be allowed to cure for at least one week so that they are non sticky and can be taken out in baskets like normal aggregates before using them in surface dressing. Approximate rate of application of binder and aggregates is given in this table for nominal aggregate size and for uncoated aggregate when the binder is bitumen or emulsion or when aggregates are pre coated. In case of bitumen and then you can choose the amount of binder to be used kg per meter square and similarly you can take aggregates in cubic meter per meter square of the area from this table. The plant and equipment which are required for surface tracing the binder distributor, cheap chip spreader, pneumatic tire roller, compressor or mechanical brooms to clean the surface, heaters, front end loaders and pickups. Now the procedure of construction is like this that we first prepare the base, provide prime coat if required, spray the binder in uniform thin film as per rate using a bitumen distributor fitted with a spray bar like this. Application temperature is 150 to 190 degree centigrade depending upon the type of binder and jet. And once you spray the binder, the next step is to spread the chips, the stone chips using a mechanical spreader. And then after that, you carry out the rolling using 60 to 80 kilometer static weight roller. And second coat is applied only after 
the first port has been open to traffic for at least two to three weeks. So this is in brief the construction procedure. IRC provides some guidelines for design of surface tracing. And when we say design of surface tracing, it means to decide about the type of surface tracing, aggregate type and expedition, type of binder, and quantity of binder and aggregate. This is the main point in the design, quantity of binder and aggregates. And it depends upon the availability of materials, traffic volume, percentage of trucks and permitted speed, environmental conditions like climate, vegetation, urbanization, alignment and grade of existing road. There are two types of surface tracing as I told earlier also. The single core surface tracing is a versatile treatment and therefore it is currently being used for practically all types of traffic conditions. Under heavy traffic conditions, two core surface tracing is preferred. Now there are two, three steps in the design of surface dressing, step one is selection of nominal size of aggregate. Large size aggregates are required for soft surfaces or their traffic is very heavy and small size aggregates are preferred for hard surfaces or light traffic. Where skid resistance is important, then also large size aggregates should be used. And the size of aggregates should be selected on the basis of the hardness of the existing surface and the traffic category. And you remember this table, and you remember this table where we have given the nominal size of aggregate to be used depending upon the traffic condition and the type of surface. And I, I explained you earlier how do we define this hard surface or normal surface or a soft surface. The nominal size of aggregate for the second coat should be about half the nominal size of that for the first coat. That means if you are using the nominal size of aggregate for first coat as 10 millimeter, then for the second coat it should be around 6.3 millimeter. But to decide the rate of application, there are two methods given in the coat. Method one is that the wires at various stages of surface dressing construction is considered. Now, when the aggregates are just laid, the wires may be assumed to 50%. After rolling and compaction, reorientation of aggregates take place and the wires may be around 30%. And when that road is open to traffic, it will create further compaction of the layer and therefore wires will be around 20% after traffic operations. Therefore, the quantity of aggregate required in cubic meter per 1 meter square area would be 80% at toward at the end of the traffic operation divided by 50% at the beginning of the operation into ALD. ALD is average least dimension of aggregate multiplied by 1 upon 1000. 1000 is here just to convert this ALT from millimeter to meter. And this ALD is average least dimension of aggregate which is measured in millimeter. Now, this ALD, ALD can be measured like this. For aggregate of same size and spherical shape, ALD is equal to the median size of the aggregates. But practically, it is not possible. Aggregates are not of same size. They are not spherical. Rather, they are sometimes cubical or even flecky also. And therefore, this ALD will depend upon the median size and flecky index of aggregates. And this nomogram is used to find out the ALT. Now, this is the median size of aggregate. Median size of aggregate is the sieve size on which 50% of aggregate will pass or 50% of aggregates will be retained. So, you can read median size of aggregate on this scale and this scale is the flexibility index of the aggregate. If you join these two points, you get ALT on this inclined scale. That is how ALD is estimated. Now, assuming that 10% of aggregate will be lost due to moving traffic, a more correct estimation of requirement of aggregate would be 1.1 times this equation, 80 by 15 to ALD upon 1000. 
or you can say 0.00176 into ALD meter cube per meter square of surface area. This is the first method. The second method is more suitable for general applications. And here, the design steps are like this. Select nominal size of aggregate using the table. And this is the table I showed you earlier also that depending upon the traffic and the type of surface, you would select the nominal size of aggregate for surface dressing. Then select type of binder to be used. Binder will depend upon the, the climatic conditions and determine ALD of the aggregate as I explained earlier in method 1. And then the select factors for traffic, type of surface, climate and type of aggregate. Now here, four tables are given in the board. One is for volume of traffic and these are the factors to be considered. For very light traffic, it is plus 3 and for very heavy traffic, it is minus 5. And these are the ranges of vehicles per day per lane for different types of volume of traffic. And similarly, for condition of existing surface, these are the factors. For untreated or prime surface, it is plus 6. And for very conspicuous surface, it is minus 3. Then third is climatic conditions. For wet and cold climate, it is plus 2. And for very dry and very hot, it is minus 2. So depending upon the climate and the size, you can choose a factor from this table. And then type of aggregate. For round and dusty, it is plus 2. And for flaky, it is minus 2. And for pre-coated aggregate, it is minus 2. So, you have now four factors. You take the sum of all these factors to determine the overall weighting factor. And then determine the design binder using this nomogram. This is the ALD, that is average dish dimension on Y scale, right side. And these inclined lines are for factor input, all four factors put together. And you can read the design binder on the bottom scale and the amount of chips required on the top scale. So to read this rate of spread of binder that is cut back, we enter this monogram from the ALD and corresponding factor input. So you plot a point here and then from that you go down to read the rate of spread of binder in kg per meter square. To read the chipping application rate, you enter this nomogram from ALD again from this and reach to the point, this point on this line AB. The intersection of ALD and this inclined line AB will give you a point here and then you can read the amount of aggregate on the upper scale here, that is in kg per meter square. So that is how you determine the rate of binder and the chipping application rate. Now it is further suggested that for slow traffic or climbing gradient cheaper than 3%, reduce the binder by 10%. And for fast traffic or downgrade of steeper than 3%, increase the rate of spread of the binder 10 to 20%. Also for paving grade binder, reduce the rate of spread by 10%. For emulsion, multiply the rate of spread obtained from the chart by a factor Z, which is equal to 90 upon the bitumen content in the emulsion in percent. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. That is how we design the surface dressing. If you have any comment, please do write in the comment box. Thank you for watching.